Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amy. I'm a registered nurse and I started this channel to share ways I manage my melasma. If you have melasma and this type of content interests you, please subscribe. Okay, so summer is almost here and summertime can be a bit of a challenge for those of us with melasma. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about why that is and provide five tips for managing this reoccurring skin condition with those challenges in mind. If you live in the par a part of the world that does not have four seasons or it's summer like year round, then I hope you find these tips even more helpful. Two of the biggest triggers for melasma are sun exposure and heat exposure. Summer obviously means higher temperatures and longer daylight hours, and tends to mean more opportunities for events and activities out in the sun and heat. So how do they trigger melasma? Well, UV rays stimulate melanocytes, which increase melanin production, causing melanin patches to appear darker, even after fading. Heat affects melasma in a negative way because of vasodilation or widening of blood vessels that can occur in the areas affected by melasma when exposed to heat, which can lead to inflammation and stimulate melanocyte pigment production. This time of the year, many people with melasma have had some experience with fading during fall and winter from you know, less sun exposure overall and or successful results for more aggressive types of treatments such as hydroquinone, lasers, and peels that dermatologists prefer patients to use and undergo during the fall and winter months. And we want to preserve that progress as much as possible. So here are my five tips. Tip number one is to plan ahead. You cannot let melasma ruin your summer fun and plans. And I encourage you to anticipate and plan to minimize sun and heat as best you can. Makes sense to try to avoid being outdoors in direct sun during peak sun hours, uh, to practice sun avoidance measures, and to do what you can to beat the heat. Let me give you some examples of what I mean by planning ahead. I thought of a few, bear with me. <laughs> so say you have an outdoor daytime wedding coming up then you may want to think about coordinating a nice new sun hat to go with your outfit. Uh, if you're planning to meet friends for lunch or dinner and the plan is to eat outdoors, see if you can request a table in the shade or under an umbrella. Now, if you know you are going to be spending time outdoors while there will be no shade in sight, then plan to create your own and bring a UPF sun umbrella. Or if you are going to be at an outdoor all day concert or at a game or heading to an amusement park, it's going to be hot. And you may wanna have a neck fan or a cooling towel to have around your neck along with you know, the usual sunscreen and hat. Uh, plan to walk your dog or go for that run just after dawn or just before dusk. And uh, one more, be mindful of what time of the day you schedule your tea time on the golf course. Things like that. Which leads me to tip number two, get some gear. I will put links below for some of my personal favorites and by gear, I'm referring to all those things you can have on hand year round, but especially during the summer to help fight the triggers. And I am talking about gear more than just the usual stuff like a wide brim UPF 50 plus sun hat. You definitely need those. But I'm also talking about a UPF face mask. UPF Gator, or when the mood strikes and it works for the situation, one of these, a UPF face shield. How about a UPF umbrella, and I'm a big fan, no pun intended, of the neck fan. I've talked about this one and all this gear in previous videos, but I wanted to show uh, this little neck fan I found at Walmart at the end of last summer on clearance for like three dollars this thing this little thing makes me so happy it's on an adjustable string it's rechargeable there's a power button right here it has three speeds and the air flows from the top here and hits the face just right and i will try to find one similar and link it below it is my new favorite gadget for managing melasma heading into summer um, also say no to metal sunglasses to avoid potential heat to the face instead opt for non-metal preferably ones with you know wide arms for just additional coverage and protection i found these tahari sunglasses 
just last week at Marshall's. Now, I know we cannot always plan ahead, but if you make it a habit to have some of this gear on hand, this type of protective gear, then you are more likely to grab them on your way out the door or keep them in your bag and even your car. I always keep a wide brim hat and UPF face mask in my car and more so in the summer, the neck fan. Uh, the exception to keeping things in the car, however, is sunscreen. So let's talk about sunscreen because it wouldn't be a video about melasma without mentioning tips about sunscreen. So the main sunscreen tip for summer is tip number three, water resistant sunscreen. Consider switching to water resistant sunscreen during the summer uh, when outdoors and be even more diligent about applying and reapplying every couple of hours and even more often uh, if you have been swimming or you're just, you know, sweaty. I have melasma on the upper lip area and that is definitely an area that can get sweaty when it's hot and humid. There are many good water and sweat resistant sunscreens available. Find one that works best for you. I'll put links below to some of my favorites, um, but I wanted to talk about one specifically because it is just that good. It is this one. It's made in Switzerland, the Ultra Sun Anti-Pigmentation Face Lotion SPF 50 Plus. It is good for sensitive skin and contains both mineral and chemical in, uh, sunscreen ingredients. And the word anti-pigmentation in the name is very appealing. <laughs> and the product description claims to use uh, revolutionary complexes that deliver uh, visible brightening effects on existing pigmentation in just 14 days. Well, I don't know about all of that, but it sounds good. And what I do know is that this has been a very effective sunscreen for my melasma when I am out in the sun and not just exposed to incidental UV rays. This provides UVA, UVB protection. It's rated four pluses. It's lightweight, non-greasy, fragrance-free, and absorbs quickly. Now, I don't know if many um, have given this much thought, but also be mindful of ordering sunscreen online during the summer. And I say this because that sunscreen is probably not in temperature controlled environments before you receive it, uh, including when it sits at your door or inside your mailbox on a hot, humid summer day. My plan is to stock up for the summer before the hot temperatures are here. Um, you could track your online orders and be notified when your package is out for delivery or when it has been delivered so that you can you know try to plan to get to it as soon as possible or you can purchase it in store um, if that is an option for you it's just something to think about clearly i think about sunscreen a lot okay also if you're going to be outside for some time consider keeping your sunscreen in a small insulated uh, cooler bag where it won't be affected by the heat. And I also mentioned about not keeping it in a car. And speaking of car, tip number four, be mindful of the heat and sun exposure while in the car. It takes no time for the inside temperature of a car to rise from the sun and even more so on sunny, hot summer days. That is why you never keep sunscreen in the car. The heat will cause the uh, formulation and the ingredients to break down and lose their efficacy. Now, summer is a challenge because of the heat with just getting into a car it is um, if it's been parked outside for any length of time now some things you can do if able is remote start the car to get the air going to reduce the uh, temperature before getting inside or try to park in the shade or parking garage when possible now those reflective type shades that you can place on the front windshield those can help with the interior uh, temperature as well uh, window tinting is an option to consider. I mean, truly, think about how much time you spend in a car. Uh, this will help reduce not only the temperature, but also help decrease the UV rays hitting your face while you're in the car. I had the windows tinted in my car as well as my husband's car, and I'll include a link for my video about car window tinting. Oh, and that UPF face mask that I mentioned that I keep in the car, it's because I often wear it to protect the areas of my, my melasma while driving or riding. And my final tip number five is to keep your skincare routine 
gentle. Remember that skincare products that cause irritation or skin irritation in general can trigger melasma. So you want to be mindful to avoid some of the more aggressive treatments, especially during the summer months when you are likely to be getting a more sun exposure and heat exposure also uh, than other times of the year uh, that can add to that irritation. For example, if you like using an acid type product in your routine, go for a more gentle option like mandelic acid. Consult with your dermatology provider about your melasma and the best course of treatment for you. Most will encor encourage holding off on any peels, lasers, and even high percentage hydroquinone and tretinoin combinations until fall winter. Summer is a time I go with non-hydroquinone products to manage my melasma. Keep in mind, sunscreen is the best step in your routine to maximize the potential uh, benefits of your skincare products for melasma during any season, but especially summer. And with the use of water-resistant sunscreens and applying even more sunscreen during the extended daylight hours of summer, I recommend making sure you are thoroughly washing it all off at the end of the day. And I find it helpful to double cleanse with an oil cleanser followed by a gentle moisturizing cleanser. I will put links below to videos for some of my skincare routines. Remember, you can experience a melasma flare up and darkening of your melasma patches any time of the year. It is just the nature of this chronic stubborn skin condition. If you do experience darkening of your melasma patches this summer, do not get discouraged. The end of summer is the best time to follow up with the dermatology provider uh, to review your uh, melasma, your treatment plan, and maybe make some changes for the fall. I hope you found this information helpful. If so, please subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with anyone who may benefit. It helps to grow my channel. Uh, please check out my playlist for more ways to avoid sun and heat exposure to better manage your melasma. Also, please comment and share below about ways you manage your melasma during the summer. Thank you to my current subscribers for your continued support. Wishing everyone good health and a safe summer. And thank you for taking the time to invest in your face. Bye.